has been one of the uh, joys for you as a small group leader? Um, getting to connect with people. It's, it's, uh, I'm definitely an extrovert and I love being with people and just like, getting to hang out with people. So that's... We are a group that know each other and just draw out people's ideas and have them kind of share their lives with us. So would you encourage someone to be a part of a small group? I certainly would. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's, there's just nothing that can beat to be together. Would you, so join, would you me join, 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 join as we uh, think about these new ministries starting up again this fall? Father God, we come before you today as a community both in person and online and ask your blessing on our congregation as we enter this fall season. We are grateful for the words of hope you spoke in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In this season where everything is new, we ask that you would help us to see what it is you were doing and that you would give us the grace to participate where you are at work to further your kingdom. Holy God, you have called us to be your witnesses and you have empowered us to be your messengers of good news. We ask that you would, by your spirit, Enable us to glorify you and be messengers of your good news in our interactions with one another, in the ministries we run, and as we seek to connect people to you. For each and every ministry of this church community, we ask your blessing, your leading, and your provision. Would you guide those who have leadership roles as they look to you for wisdom to lead in these challenging times? Would you help each one of us to see how we can join you in the work you want to do through this community of believers? Jesus, may who we are, how we live, our interactions with one another, and the ministries of this community reveal your goodness. And Lord of the universe, as we see and breathe the smoke from the fires in the U.S. this morning, we ask for your intervention to stop these fires, to bring about a solution to the coronavirus, and to be near to all those who are experiencing challenge and uncertainty as a result. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So good morning, good to have you all here this morning and online, wherever you are, it's uh, great to be joining together. This uh, typically, traditionally, year by year by year is our kickoff Sunday and it's a little different in this season because this is a season like uh, no other. Uh, last half year has been um, something uh, I don't think any of us have experienced before. So what does kickoff look like as we join together? So I've been reflecting on that, and, and what do I preach on on this day? So Wednesday night, I had uh, two uh, prayer meetings that I was scheduled actually to host on Zoom. Uh, one was late afternoon, one was early evening, and both of them actually glitched for me. Uh, the first one I, I was to be hosting, I went to get on Zoom, and I had forgotten which email I was using and which password, and I got completely befuddled, and it wasn't until about six or seven minutes late that I was able to engage. I apologized. We started into prayer. I started praying. I prayed for about a minute, and my computer died. <laughs> So I went and plugged it, I hobbled over, as you can imagine, plugged it in, got it fired up again, and I went to get in, and I was shut out of the meeting that I was hosting. I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to get back in. So I just sat there, did my best to pray on my own. Later that evening, I was hosting another meeting, uh, and it turned out that the communication hadn't happened very well, and I was the only one sitting there on Zoom waiting to pray, and nobody else showed up. So as I was sitting there, one of those times, I had my Bible with me, and, and I opened it, and I don't recommend this as a regular pattern for devotions, but as it was opened and I looked down, I was struck by where it was opened. 
It was open to a passage that the Lord had put his finger on for me about a year and a half ago. And I felt in that moment like he was putting his finger on it again. It was open to an Old Testament prophet. Uh, the whole book is just two chapters long. And at the beginning of 2019, one of the verses on January 1st of 2019 just leapt right off the page to me. And I thought, this is a message for us at Heritage. And over that next month, uh, in my devotions every day, I read through the whole of this particular book, two chapters worth, and soaked in it. And in that quiet moment on Wednesday evening, as I had it open, I was sitting waiting to connect in, in Zoom, I was drawn back. I had not meant to be, but I felt like the Lord himself was nudging me, and I knew in that moment what my focus for the sermon today needed to be. Now, interestingly, backing up, as a staff, we'd met together about a, a little over a month ago, and we talked about what the theme for today should be. Uh, as we start this new season, as we re-engage, as we um, reconnect, and we thought about the theme of building, and we thought we'd use Lego bricks as, as the image. And so, uh, those of you that are here this morning, you've got a cupcake, you got it at your table, it's yours to munch on, uh, it's yours to take home with you, it's got a Lego brick on it. And the Lego brick is meant to communicate that we as a community are meant to be building community. And so as I reflected on Wednesday night, I felt like these two things merged, Haggai and Lego. <laughs> because Haggai is all about building. It's the perfect start for this weird, weird season of kicking off in COVID. Now, in Haggai's day, a remnant of God's people, of Israel, had, had returned to Israel from exile. Uh, they had started rebuilding the temple of God some 18 years previously. But then they'd run into opposition. They'd, they'd hit some impediments, some roadblocks, and they just simply stopped. God's temple was left unfinished. It was incomplete. It was languishing. Something had gotten in the way. And Haggai's message at core is simply this. It's time to build again. Get on with it. Get back to it. Complete the task. Don't let opposition get in the way. Don't let roadblocks, don't let impediments get in the way. Don't let discouragement get in the way. Some of you saw the previous temple in all its amazing glory, Haggai says. And you need to know that God is going to do something even greater now. So, Get on with it. And I think that message at its core is timely for us as a community here at Heritage. I think it's probably timely for many, many churches across the city of Abbotsford today, across our province, across our country, around the world, actually, because COVID has put many of us off kilter. We've stepped back because we had to. But... It's time to build again. And it doesn't actually matter if we're more limited in physical meeting because the temple that God is calling us to is not actually a building of bricks and mortars. It, it, it's not a physical building. It's us. As a people, we're the temple. We're the place where the building is to happen. And so Paul in 1 Corinthians 3 says this, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. And over in Ephesians chapter 2, he says this, In him, that's in Christ, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. So I've got to state the obvious now. COVID cannot get in the way of God's purposes, right? Can I hear a loud, hearty amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. COVID can't get in the way. Neither can anything else. But he wants us to actually engage in the process. It's time to build again. And that's why Haggai is such a perfect little book for this day today. See, things were not going well at all for the people of God in Haggai's time in Israel. Crops were failing. They had expected much, and they got just little. 
There was drought. The labor of their hands was not producing anything. One commentator says this. He says, morale was low and people concentrated on their own circumstances. To them, it was an inappropriate time to spend effort and wealth on God's house. But the Lord, through Haggai, says, no. No, the time is now. Invest in my house. You're meant to be building my house, God says, and you're not doing it. Re-engage. It's time to build again. And so the people, with warmth of heart, they responded. They, they heard the message, they understood it, and they turned in God's direction. And the Lord, through Haggai, spoke a number of words to the people in those two short chapters, and three messages stand out to me. Three messages that I think are for us right here, right now, at Heritage in this season. So we cannot do everything that we have always done in other seasons right here and now. We cannot come together even on a Sunday morning all together in one place like we're used to doing, like we love to do. We cannot engage in all of the events and the gatherings and the meals and the programs that we might have done in other seasons. But the Lord is still intent on building His church, His temple. It's us. And he means for us to fully engage in the activity, in the work that he's doing. And he's going to show us how. So let me give you these three messages which God spoke in Haggai's day. The third of them, the final of them, the last one that we come to is the message that jumped off the page to me on January 1st, 2019. And the other two are equally powerful. So before we go in, let's pray and ask that God would speak to us by His Spirit. So, dear Lord, we thank You that You have told us that the Spirit will lead us into all truth. And we pray in this season, right here, right now, for this community, that You would lead us into truth and please use the messages spoken through Haggai so many years ago. Speak them into our ears, our minds, our hearts, our experience, right here, right now, at Heritage. In Jesus' name, to His glory. Amen. So here's message number one. The text, Haggai 1.13 says, Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. And can you not hear the drum rolling? It's this amazing buildup. This is a prophet of God that's speaking. It's a message from the Lord. Really? I'm ready. Okay, here it is. Let's hear it, Haggai. I am with you, declares the Lord. And I can just hear the people that day saying, are you kidding? (laughs) Is is that the message? I thought there was this big drum roll. I thought you were a prophet of Almighty God. I thought there was full, amazing depth of, of, of revelation that you were going to communicate to us. And this is the message? Yeah, this is the message. And I've got to say, I find it absolutely powerful and profound in its simplicity. I am with you. And friends, oh, how we need to hear this message right now here in this time in this place at Heritage. I am with you. You see, if there was ever to be any encouragement to jump in and to re-engage and uh, to, to join into the building of God's temple, which is us, this would be it. Don't you want to be where the Lord himself is? Now, we trust that we've actually got some good programs and group activities and and events uh, for us to re-engage in in this season. But I've got to say, who cares, really, if God's not in it? If the Lord's not here, why bother? If he's not with us, what's the point? But if he is here, then everything is transformed, even in COVID, even in this season. I am with you, the Lord says. So, this is a foundational promise that the Lord God Himself spoke to His people again and again and again throughout the Scriptures. And I just want to, over the surface, give you a quick tour of some of those, for instances. Isaac, Remember him? Uh, His father was Abraham. Abraham was the guy that got the promise. I'm going to make of you a great nation. I'm calling you uh, to be the father of many, many people. Abraham had the name, the calling, the promise. But now listen to what God says to Isaac. Genesis 26, he says, 
I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Jacob, Jacob was Isaac's son. Jacob had a horrible name. His name meant heel grabber, cheat, basically. And yet God had chosen him. And in Genesis 28, God says to Jacob, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. Joshua. Joshua, remember, was the guy that marched all the people round and round and round Jericho, and they cried out, and the walls came tumbling down. It was an amazing moment. But Joshua was the leader that followed Moses. Who wants to follow Moses? Come after him. Uh, be the next guy. Moses was amazing. He was anointed by God powerfully up and down through the Scriptures. His name is mentioned again and again. God worked amazing miracles through him. God rescued his people out of Egypt in slavery through Moses, an amazing guy. And Joshua comes next. And if you ever wanted to be discouraged, to disengage, to drop out, to stop the project, it would have been in Joshua's situation after Moses is no longer on the scene. But God speaks to Joshua. Joshua 1, he says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a prophet. He was just a young guy. And he felt too young. He felt too inadequate. He felt too inexperienced. But God in Jeremiah 1 says to him, do not be afraid for... I am with you, and I will rescue you. Paul. Paul is this amazing church planter, theologian, uh, apostle of the church. He wrote a <laughs> huge portion of the New Testament, and yet he had his moments, and in Corinth was one of them. He was experiencing opposition in the synagogue, and he was pushed out, and then in the community itself of Gentiles, there was opposition rising. And at night, in a vision, God speaks to Paul, and he says, Acts 18, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. Sheer presence, God on our side, with us, so incredibly powerful. I think I've told you before that uh, before we came to Heritage, uh, we were at another church, uh, for four years, and two years were really good, and two years were really, really difficult. Uh, there was opposition that rose. There was hostility that I felt personally. Uh, it was just a very, very difficult time. I had two friends at that point, uh, neither of whom lived close by. One lived in Ontario, and one lived in Oregon. And both of them said to me in different ways, I'm with you. I've got your back. I'm supporting you. I'm alongside you. And they would call me from time to time, and they would say, how are you doing? I'm praying. How can I pray? What if it was the Lord God Almighty, King of the universe, who said that to you? And not at the end of uh, the other end of a telephone line, but right close by. What if it was the one who is always present, who is all powerful, who is fully able, who is absolutely loving? What if he was the one who said, I've got your back? I'm with you. He said it. This is his message to us right here, right now at Heritage. I am with you. I love it. I embrace it. Will you embrace it with me? Yeah. Message number two, Haggai. It's chapter 2, verse 9. Haggai reports the Lord God saying this, And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Now, peace in the Old Testament is an absolutely huge word. It's big. The Hebrew word is actually shalom. It means much more than just the absence of conflict. What it means is wholeness, completeness, health, abundance, well-being in every aspect of who you are, life in all its fullness. This is what Jesus promised in John 10. I think he's thinking about shalom. And in this place, I will grant peace, God says. Now, this peace, shalom, is played out in all aspects of life, but I want to focus on one particular aspect that I think is absolutely crucial to us as we engage in this task of building community right here at Heritage. That particular aspect of peace is relational. 
peace in relationships, wholeness, completeness, abundance in relationships. And as I read through this book again and again in that first month of 2019, that's the hope I was hearing from this verse, that in this place, God will grant peace. Specifically in this place, in this community, here at Heritage, God will grant peace in relationships. Now, this was a key part of the Old Testament promise of the coming messianic kingdom. Messiah has now come, Jesus himself. He's inaugurated his kingdom. And all of that richness of Old Testament promise of peace, shalom, harmony, unity, no harm to one another, uh, rather instead wholeness, all of that is uh, implicit in the kingdom that Jesus brings. So Isaiah 11 gives this uh, powerful, idyllic picture of the settled harmony and peace. So just listen and look to the words. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so this is the promise that, that we step into, that God is wanting to work this peace in us. We wait the end of time for its fullness to be expressed, but his intention is to express it in us right here now. In this place, I will grant peace. And so the early church, we look at them and we see them thriving and alive and embracing the, the new thing that God is doing in his kingdom. But it must be said that practically the early church struggled with this issue of peace too, because our human nature keeps tripping us up. It keeps getting in the way. But nevertheless, this is the promise. This is the hope. This is the thing that God speaks to us. In this place, I will grant peace. And so I would like us all to pause for a moment for practicum. And what, those of you who are here, would you mind just closing your eyes? You do that. If you're at home online, would you just close your eyes? And I want to ask you to think, cast your mind around the church community here at Heritage. If you're online watching and you're not part of this community, then think of your own community. I want you to cast your mind all around all of the relationships that you are aware of in the church community beyond yourself, all the other relationships not including you. And as you look around in your mind's eye, are you aware of any tensions, of any unpeace, disharmony, backbiting, anger? Don't speak it. Pray about it. And I want you to take this message from Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. In this place I will grant peace. And I'd like you to put it like an ointment, like a, a salve, like a, a medication right on that particular relationship. I want you to apply it and pray it. Say, dear God, would you work your promise right there? Now, with your eyes closed, I want you to continue on in the next part of the practicum. I want you now to put yourself into this community. Think of yourself in the midst of the community of the heritage. Is there any relationship of which you are a part that is tense, where there's unpeace, disharmony, jealousy, envy? Again, I ask you, invite you, urge you to grab hold of this promise. In this place, I will grant peace and apply it, believe it for yourself. And then thirdly, I invite you, dare you to ask this question, Lord, by your help, on the basis of this promise, Lord, what is it you are calling me to do? So, Lord, I just want to pause and thank you for hearing our prayers. Would you please be at work in them in all of these places? And would you please speak to us about next steps that you have for us to engage in this promise? So, the first message is, I am with you. You can open your eyes. Second message is, in this place I will grant peace. Third message, finally, this now is the verse that jumped off the page at me. 
January 1st, 2019. It hit me then, it hits me now as a promise for heritage. Here it is very simply. Haggai 2.19, from this day on, I will bless you. And I think of the early church reborn in Jesus Christ, filled with the Spirit. And immediately after that, the end of Acts 2, we get uh, told of the signs of God's blessing on them. And it's rich and wonderful as the church is being built up. Together, they are passionately engaged in fellowship. They're in prayer. They're in worship. There's sacrifice. There's generosity. There's miracles being worked from God in them and through them. There's evangelism. There's new births. There's baptisms happening all the time. There's passion for God's Word uh, to, to embrace it, passion from God's Word. There's obedience to what God is saying. From this day on, I will bless you, God said, and the church experienced it. And then I think backwards in time. I think backwards in time to the high priestly blessing that Moses gave to his brother Aaron to speak over all of God's people. And I can't imagine that Haggai said, from this day on I will bless you without thinking about this amazing promise. And so let me just speak it over us from number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. So I've told you this before, but I'll tell you again, these uh, were the first words that I spoke to each of our kids. Just moments after they were born, I held each of them in my arms and I looked them in the eye and I kissed them on the forehead. I cuddled, cuddled them up. It was so amazing. And I spoke these words over them. The Lord bless you and keep you and on and on. And I want to invite us in this season to take the message from Haggai, the Lord's word, take it to heart for us. From this day on, I will bless you. And I want to invite you in this season to engage again in the work of building community here. Whether we can be here physically or not, we can engage in this spiritual activity of building up the temple of God, which is us, God's people. He's intent on doing it. We can join him in the work. And I want to invite you, as it were, to take Heritage Alliance Church in your arms (laughs) and look us in the eyes and speak this promise over us. From this day on, God will bless us. And to take the high priestly blessing given by Moses to Aaron, spoken over the people in those days, and to pray it over us here and now. So if you would, would you please bow your heads again, close your eyes, and I'm going to lead us in praying this prayer. On the basis of his promise that he is with us, on the basis of the promise that in this place he will give us peace, we now pray that his blessing would be upon us. I'm going to invite the worship team to come and be ready, and they are going to lead us after I lead us in prayer. They're going to lead us in a sung prayer. It's a song that is based in this great high priestly blessing that was written earlier this year and has become in so many ways an anthem in this season of COVID, sung around the world, sung over the churches in many locations, that God would bless us and make us a blessing. So let's join together in praying. And so, Father, we thank you. It is true that you are with us. And we thank you. It is true that peace is in your heart. And in this place, in these relationships, you will grant peace. And we thank you that it is true that we are in your sights. And it is your intent to bless us and make us a blessing. And so I pray for us that you, Lord, would bless us and keep us, that you would make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us, and that you would lift up your countenance on us and give us peace, and we pray it in the name of your wonderful Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's join together in sung prayer.
face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Sing His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His presence go before
Church, let's join this together this morning, whether you're in the building here with us, downstairs watching on the big screen down there, at home on your own couch, and let's declare this not only over the church this morning, let's declare it over each other, let's declare it over our families, let's declare it over our city, our neighborhood, sing it one more time, the Lord bless you, and keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, and bring you peace. Let me just remind us that our identity uh, restated together earlier this year was that we are a caring people focused on Jesus, building community, which is what we focused on today, impacting the world. And so as we re-engage in this season, as we keep on building up what God is doing here, one of the things we need to really grab hold of is this impacting the world, which we do in many different ways. But let me give you two that we're going to engage in later this month. The first is in concert with other churches in the city of Abbotsford. Uh, we are sponsoring, under the auspices of the Abbotsford Christian Leaders Network, uh, a city prayer walk. In the final week of September, uh, there's details that came out to you in the uh, congregational email on Friday. Uh, I think there's details on our website. If there's not, we'll get them there shortly. And we're inviting you to sign up to walk in one of the streets that where you live uh, during that week and to pray. So look for further details on that. We can impact the world through prayer. The second thing is that we want to impact those that are in our own circle of relationships by sharing good news of Jesus with them. And one of the ways that we can do that is that at the end of September, Sunday, September 27th, we're going to have a guest service. And we would invite you to take these little cards, which we have here available this morning. They're also online, and you can print them off. Uh, you can send them by email to someone to invite them to come and join us here physically or to tune in on that Sunday to our service. And we're intending that day to celebrate the good news of Jesus. Uh, the theme is Jesus ready when you are. He's ready and waiting. He's at the door knocking. And we're going to listen to some testimonies of people, uh, which we've filmed already. They're great. Uh, we, I'm going to be preaching from the Gospel of John. We're going to have some great music, and we'd love to invite you to invite people. So I've asked Walter Hiller to tell us a little bit about his experience of inviting people online last spring. So listen up. So, Walter, uh, thanks for being willing to share, and uh, we're thinking about the theme of invitation. Uh, we're going to have a, a guest service at the end of September, September 27th. Uh, we're putting the whole service together with um, stories of faith, good music, uh, me preaching from the Gospel of John, the basics of who Jesus is, so that people that have not connected before could connect. So we're wanting to invite people. I, and I was really inspired by what you did last Easter. I just found your story so encouraging. So could you tell us a little bit about what you did? Sure, it was actually really simple. I realized that we're in the midst of a pandemic and it's a unique opportunity actually to invite people to come to church who would actually never come to church because it's a digital experience for them. There's no threat of having to come into a building, into a strange environment, meet strange people, but yet, they could hear the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. So I went through my contact list on my computer and chose a few people who I thought really could uh, benefit a lot by hearing a very clear gospel presentation. And I came up with 18 people and I composed a very, very simple but very polite invite to them, issued it to them, prayed, and let God do the work. Push the button. and Push the button, it. send yeah. it off. Good That's on. It. Yeah. So of 18, how many people responded? Well, six got back and told me that they really came to the service with 
uh, much joy and really uh, liked the service. And so I thought that was a good response rate. Pretty good percentage, 33%. Yeah, 33 and a third to be exact. <laughs> That's great. So uh, we are having this guest service. We're actually, we've put together a, a great postcard that can be emailed to people. We've got uh, a banner for uh, Facebook that people could make use of, uh, something on Twitter. So people can push the button and send this out uh, in advance of September 27th. And we hope that people would come either in person uh, or online and join in on uh, the theme of the day, which will be Jesus, ready when you are. So um, we're hoping for a good response. So well, Tim, I think it's an excellent idea to have these guest service. You've made it about as easy on us as anyone could hope for. Every one of us here at Heritage Alliance Church need to take that responsibility of saying, who in our lives would we like to have meet Jesus? And it, it would be so easy for us to just to push the button and choose a couple of people that we want to send this message of invitation to and let God do the rest. And I think we could expect some great results. Many people, hundreds of people could visit us digitally on that day and hear the good news of Christ. Thank you to you uh, in advance uh, for taking this on and pushing the button. So a couple of other announcements. We are re-engaging right now, and this week is a, a week of many things starting up. Uh, so let me highlight a few, but all of them are on our website. That's the go-to place, and I'd invite you to go to the main play page and scroll down, and you'll come to the calendar, and you will see the events that are restarting this week. Let me highlight a few. On Wednesday night, uh, we have Pioneer Clubs for Kids starting here at 7 o'clock. Uh, we'd invite you to register online and to come with your kids that evening. Uh, the following night, uh, Thursday night, uh, Oasis for uh, middle school and high school kids is starting, 6.30 in the building. Uh, we would love for you to uh, uh, have those middle school, high school students come or invite friends uh, to be here. A group of women have been meeting week by week by week for craft and chat, and they're shifting now to Monday nights. So this Monday uh, is a time to engage. Come, bring your project, or just come and chat and enjoy uh, that time together. And small groups are going to be starting up over this week, the next week, the coming week. And we would invite you, if you are not part of a small group currently, to be in touch with the church office specifically with Pastor Terry, and he will work to get you linked in uh, to a small group in this season. Now, could I invite us to stand and let me pray God's blessing on us once again as we go. So let's pray. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may he lift up his smiling countenance upon us and give us peace in the name of him who is the Prince of Peace, Jesus himself. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Go in peace.